anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I am doing all right, Jared. How are you? Good, sir. But before you answer that, why don't you share your screen for everybody to see? Oh, am I not sharing my screen to the Discord? Starting off bad. strong here. Starting off strong. You know, if I if I were a real professional, um, I would probably be like just starting over, just stopping the podcast, starting over, doing everything the correct way. Um, but we're we're not professionals here. Uh, I think that's 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 the notable takeaway. If you've been with us for a long time, we are we are not notable professionals. We're not notable, nor are we professionals, let alone notable professionals. You're professional enough. You know, that's the nicest thing someone said to me today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get better next time. As we used oh, to good say. Lord. <laughs> Kyle, we're in our eighth season. I think we're screwed at this point. <laughs> Speaking of screwed. Um, Florida. It is, it is, it is collegiate chaos. Colorado. The, <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> Oh, collegiate chaos. So I stayed on a bye in an early bye week, and we will um instead of doing a review of a hostage game on Monday here, we're we're gonna go ahead and release a collegiate chaos a day early here as we got we have a different episode for Tuesday's release here. So we will we'll do collegiate chaos for today. We're doing collegiate chaos again on Tuesday because Kyle, we're bringing back the tier list. We wanted to talk about all the games and then, you know, we needed to organize the, the tier list from scratch and we figured let's take a full episode and do that. Um, USC is M. I disagree, but we'll, we'll argue about that on tomorrow's episode. Yeah. Um, so let's 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 get right into it here. Utah, Utah playing with fire and got burnt. Third time yeah. the charm, charm here. They got burnt here, losing to Oregon State on Friday night, 21 to 7. Yeah, they're just not the, the same. The, the lack of offense finally caught up to them. Yeah, they're, they're not the same without rising. Just straight up not the same team without him. Um, yeah. No, I, rise, I, no rising to beat up the Beavers. No. God damn it, Kyle. <laughs> I tried to go. I tried there to go past. Is. I tried to go past it, but I couldn't. Um Yeah, Utah uh top 10 team falls. Probably the closest thing we have to a true chaos. Although we didn't really I I would say didn't have, but we didn't have a true chaos this weekend. This is the second week in a row with no like true chaos. Uh, a, a, a number 10 losing to a number 19 isn't isn't true chaos, but it's probably about as close as we got. It's still a top 10 team losing to a not top, not, a not top 10 team. Uh, Florida, a ranked team lost to Kentucky, an unranked team. Not just lost, not just losing, not just lost, it. not just lost. They, they got they got run out of the building and literally run out of the building like they they have no run defense. Um, that being said, though, Kentucky was favored in that football game. Vegas had them by a couple points, maybe just one point. Um, Kentucky was undefeated. Florida wasn't. It almost just feels like maybe Florida shouldn't have been ranked, if we're being honest. Kentucky is now uh, Kentucky is ranked now, which is cute till next week. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of speaking of SEC teams that shouldn't be ranked, uh, LSU losing to Ole Miss in a in a Big Twelve, I mean a SEC shootout, fifty five to forty nine. Yikes! That that game there be there. There's a reason why America didn't embrace arena football, which is that at a certain point. When when touchdowns become expected, they stop becoming fun. In this game, it was just like touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. It was like, OK, and uh, leave it to Brian Kelly uh, to totally just blame his players 
uh, in the press conference. He was asked about all of the big plays they were giving up. Uh, and he basically said, uh, no one knew is walking into the locker room. So in typical Brian Kelly fashion, uh, taking none of the responsibility for his team failure and putting it all on his players. I have a buddy who's a huge Florida state fan. He says Florida state should be number one because of their wins. I argue, uh, DC and LSU and, and Clemson both have two losses and stink thoughts. Uh, we're doing the tier list on the next episode. Um, so we'll, we'll get to ranking the teams on the next episode. We're bringing back the tier list on the next episode. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into who we think should be number one, number two, number three, number four, um, at the very least always be plugging. Yes, absolutely. Well, you made it easy for me. You made it easy for me. All right. Some other teams in the, in the top 25 here, uh, Texas takes care of business over Kansas. This, this was one of those games that were Texas always seemed to, or Kansas, excuse me, Kansas always seemed to give high ranked teams a little bit of trouble, but I, I think we're safe to say that Texas is for real this year, Jared. Yeah, no, th this is a good Texas team. This is a very good Texas team. Um, I I have no doubt at this point that uh, they'll make the playoffs and I will give them very big praise on the next episode. Um, spoilers. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I like this Texas team. As uh, Austin points out in the chat, the Red River rivalry is is next week. Um, so that's a that's a big game to look forward to. I, I like Texas a lot more than I like Oklahoma, but that game's always goofy. So who knows? Yep. Uh, their O-line NIL deal might be the most effective upfront pay system. I, you'll have to educate me on that. I'm not aware of it. Speaking of goofy games, uh, Notre Dame uh, pulling up the, the win on a uh, last minute drive uh, to beat Duke 21 to 14. Man, it looked like Notre Dame was going to be, be putting up some points, especially after they, was it the first drive? Yeah, it was the first drive. They went down and scored the touchdown. It's like, oh, no, okay, they're they're not going to sleepwalk here. And <laughs> uh, yeah, the rest of the game did not turn out that way. And Notre Dame had to come back and beat Duke or come, come back, score that touchdown to pull up the 21 to 14 victory. Speaking of Notre Dame, um, and, and if we can go back to Florida for a moment and how they uh, ineffective their defense was uh, very famously at this point, Notre Dame gave up the game winning touchdown to Ohio State with only 10 guys on the field. Um, their defense apparently plays better with 11 as they as they get the win over Duke. But um, Florida gave up a a touchdown with 13 players on the field against Kentucky. So. It's that's by far worse. <laughs> by far worse. worse. You this have two worse extra guys and you three. still can't stop them. That's worse by a factor of three, my good friend. Uh, yeah, so that's what uh, where you want to go next? How about Auburn, Georgia. Uh, don't don't be fooled. This is not a good Auburn football team. Uh, no, nah, it's no, nah, it, it, it really isn't this, this should have been a, a big Georgia win here, but man, they've, it's been, it's been, this, this is Georgia this year. They've been keeping things close here. They, they squeaked out a win against South Carolina, struggled the weekend before against a South UAB. Carolina team that just got destroyed by Tennessee, by the way. Uh -huh. Yeah. They struggled against UAB and decided to play football the second half. And yeah, and here's here they are here against against Auburn. And yeah, it was it was a tie game going into the fourth quarter. And, and just just so we're clear on Auburn, Auburn, uh, Texas A&M had a more decisive win against Auburn and Texas A&M is who they are. And Auburn barely beat Cal. 
Cal. Cal. Which then the issue is recently... their schedule. UGA can sleepwalk into the playoffs, and because uh, uh, there's no dominant team, they could win it all. I, I that didn't. Anytime I've seen a team like try to sleepwalk through the regular season and then put it together in the playoffs, it's not worked out for them. It's a dangerous game they're playing. Yeah, it's. I mean, think of Ohio State in 2015 or Florida State in 2014. Yeah, FSU versus Oregon. Yeah, exactly. You you can't. It doesn't matter how talented you are. You can't. You can't sleepwalk through the season and then flip the switch in the playoffs. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, now, I, I, now, now, now seeing how George is playing with fire here, they they get Kentucky this weekend here, and yeah, we'll, we'll see if they actually uh, put it together here or with this Kentucky running attack, and will they will they make it another close game and have Georgia another another scare. I, th- I think that might be an LSU to watch. LSU is not a good football team by any means. They're ranked and they shouldn't be. Um, but the way, or sorry, uh, LSU is playing Auburn next week. I, I have, I still have Auburn schedule up. I got very confused there for a second. Um, Austin says Auburn ran for 5.1 yards per carry against. Yeah. They over 200 yards against Georgia. This is, this is not, well, I was going to say your grandpa's Oregon, but this is not your slightly older brother's Oregon. <laughs> or Oregon, Georgia. What the hell's wrong with me? Georgia, Georgia, Two, Georgia, Georgia. 200, 219 yards against Georgia on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is, I don't know what's wrong with Georgia, but they're not they're not right. Um, Michigan finally kind of looked right. Nebraska's not good. Don't get me wrong, but they're not. Toledo or I was about to say Bowling Green, but Bowling Green just took the Georgia Tech this weekend. Not that Georgia Tech's good, but still it's a, it's an ACC team and you're a max school. Um, Georgia's a one trick pony. Get the ball to a mammoth tight end. Yeah, that's basically what they've got offensively right now. Brock Bowers won it for Georgia. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Michigan, like I said, finally kind of looking like Michigan should look. They they've had a bunch of good looking scores, but in the Nebraska game, they actually did it early in the game. Early. Um, yeah. which, exactly you know, what you you were expecting from from this Michigan team. And they finally finally got it together in this game. And yeah, I think kind of what you were about to allude here, like it's what challenge is going to come to Michigan here. At Minnesota night game at Minnesota, and mm, is is, yeah. is that is that one of no. our rules here? Don't play, don't play against a uh, Big Ten West division on the road at night. Is is that the case here, Jared? I don't know. It's October first, late enough in the season it, for us to be. Maybe I don't know. And Inevitable then, and Michigan, then Indiana, Natty and then, is going to be a pain. Not going to happen. Yeah, and then Indiana, Michigan State, Purdue, and then. And state. So week, what is that? Week 10, 11 is when they'll finally get their first real opponent. Yeah. And like I just said, Georgia, you, I don't, you can't just sleepwalk through a season and then expect to turn it on when it matters. I don't think it works. Um, Penn State, by the way. Don't let that final score fool you. Um, yeah, they. They, they, they that poured it office. on late against North Northwestern final score, 41 to 13, but yeah, it was 10, 10 halftime there. 10, 10 at halftime. Jared, why won't it happen? I don't think either Michigan or Georgia are all that good. I don't think either of them are all that good. I think neither of them have the offensive line that they're accustomed to having. No one's all that good. No one is. I agree. I agree. I agree. But I've seen other teams at least do it. Who who's the best win between Georgia and Florida or Georgia and Michigan? Mm, That's a good question. Who what's the best win? I'll I'll tell you right now. It's Georgia over Auburn. Yeah. Yep. 
that the best opponent that either of them have played so far is Auburn. And neither of them have looked good against that crap schedule. Right yeah, now, looking, looking, give looking at me, Georgia, the rest of Georgia's schedule here. Can our uh, Florida? I mean, we'll find out Kentucky if they're really the real deal here. But that Florida is not good. Missouri somehow ranked what? Uh, Ole Miss. Ole Miss uh, can't play defense. Tennessee is always overranked here. Yeah, they. There's really nobody on Georgia. At least, at least Michigan. They got two top 10 opponents on their schedule here. Missouri is ranked because they're in the SEC. 100%. 100%. And yeah, they're, you know, they're a five and a team for, from a power conference. And to me, they should probably be ranked because of that. But okay, I would also then, say, oh, are you going to say it? Go ahead, Kyle. Then the uh, Terps should be ranked. Yes. The Terps should be ranked. Exactly. Then what about Maryland? Why is it Maryland ranked? Mm -hmm. is do i actually think maryland's all that fantastic no i don't but if missouri can be a 5-0 and team who's ranked just because they're 5-0 and and from a power conference why not maryland honestly i i'd like to see i i i'd like to see maryland versus lsu right now i i if you if, if you really think lsu would win that game going away They'd probably favor LSU by 13 and a half. I was thinking 10 and a half, but yeah, I'd take Maryland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would too. Maryland is better than Florida. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And again, I don't I'm think Maryland's great just for the record. Uh, yeah. I just don't, I just don't think that there's, I don't think there's any good teams. There's no great teams. Even then, like even like 15 to 25 isn't all that good. Well, so speaking of uh, great teams here, USC and Colorado, USC looked like they were just going to boat race Colorado. Where, where, where was it here? They were up. Uh, let me do a score somewhere. They were up 41 to 14. Yeah. In the third quarter. And they almost and they almost blew it away there. And they, they were they were an onside kick away from Colorado having another having a chance to uh to go ahead and tie the game. Yeah. USC no defense. No, yes, USC has How a great does Alex offense. Grinch you, still have a job. U, USC has a great offense. They're gonna put up big numbers here. Caleb Williams is Which rule fantastic. Is that, Austin? Caleb Williams is fantastic. He's just doing crazy, crazy things, but He's got he's got no defense to back him up. He, they they have to score forty plus points every game just to have a chance to win. Sounds familiar. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it does. Yes. So USC they play Arizona this week, then they play Notre Dame the week after that. U, Utah Utah is not the same Utah that um, they should be. What if they and get they rising the, back? And then, they, and then they end the season well, what, what Washington you, and Oregon. What if Utah gets rising back? And yeah. It, yeah. If, if rising comes back, then and with the type of defense that Utah has. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That, that could be, that could be a really interesting game. Yeah. And USC has not but, played a defense as good as Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame with 11 on the field, but they've not played yeah. a defense as good as Notre Dame yet. Yeah. Uh, Woody says USC will lose two or three games. Yeah, between Notre Dame, potentially Utah, Washington, and Oregon, and how susceptible their defense is. Yeah, yeah. By the I, way, I can see that. I can see that too. We can absolutely use Colorado because the games were only played a week apart. Colorado had the same crew on the field. We can use. Colorado as a common opponent very effectively to compare USC and Oregon. Absolutely. And and guess what? The comparison is not great for USC. Nope. 
right, um, Arizona so yeah, gave they, Washington they, fits, did they? I, I didn't watch much yeah, of that they, game. They I, did, yeah. So USC won 48-41. So going going to what Woody was saying, yeah, Washington beat Arizona 31-24. to I admit I did not stay up to watch this game here. The, the it was. score looked, the score looked, I, I feel like Washington got out to a decent early lead, right? Because I went to bed. I was like, oh, this isn't uh, going to turn out to be let's anything. Let's see here. Let's see here. It was, uh, do, 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 yeah, third quarter. It was 28-10, and it was 31, it was 31-17, and then Arizona got a touchdown with a minute left to make it a one-score game. Yeah, so I bet, what, did they, did they try an onside kick at that point? Probably. Yeah. yeah, no, I just, I remember thinking, eh, this game's far enough ahead. I'm actually going to go to sleep now. Um, uh, the Pac-12, man, they're going out with a bang. Got to give them credit. They're, they're a fun conference this year. But, but you, can't, you can't say the Pac-12 sucks this year like we've done in years past. No, and even the two teams they're leaving behind are pretty decent. Yeah, surprisingly. Why why is the Pac-12 so good all of a sudden? Sorry, Nomad. They don't suck this this year. They they don't. Um let's not forget that this say, Utah go, team, this was, Utah team that we're talking about not being the same Utah team and not being all that great, beat Florida. And I'm not saying Florida's necessarily all that great, but Florida beat Tennessee or yeah, Florida beat Tennessee. To answer your to answer your question, Jared, it would have made it would have made more sense if both if the vast majority of the teams don't already have a place that they're going. But it could be a um, could be a resume builder for them. Like, hey, look how good we're we are. Hey, hey, other Power no. Five conference, look at us. No, one one season doesn't make you. I know a a valuable university. Maybe the maybe the Big Twelve. I've been I've I've heard, I've heard that the coaches at Washington State and Oregon State are telling recruits that they're going to be in the Big Twelve. Um, okay. now surely no coach has ever lied to a recruit before. Never. No. Never. That's never it's happened. Never happened. Never. Um, just, just quick, just a quick conference realignment thing. Uh, the, I, I think it was the university president at Clemson said that they would be leaving the ACC sooner rather than later. Uh, Florida state, ACC, UNC, a couple of the schools, not happy. Um, with the addition of Stanford and Cal and their little bit of money that they have in the ACC is going to be split up even further. Keep an eye on the ACC as uh, those pillars are crumbling. Anywho, uh, what, what, what game we got next here, Kyle? You want to talk about Mizzou uh, Vanderbilt? Because I don't. See, Oregon took care of business against Stanford, 42-6. Started off a bit slow in that game. Yeah. yeah or, or, Oregon's, Oregon's pretty good, too. Oregon's really good. Yeah, I like Oregon. I like Oregon. I do, too. I do, too. Uh, especially with uh, with Nick's. Nick's just dynamic with his feet as well. Yeah, it's definitely... I, yeah, like you said, Pac-12 is going to be really fun here especially in November. It's <laughs> Pac-12 is going to be really fun to watch. Oklahoma we'll see, we'll beats. See, we'll, see. we'll see if it lasts. We'll see if it lasts. We'll see if it lasts. Yeah. Oklahoma beats Iowa State 50 to 20. Speaking of teams that um, could potentially uh, have upsets, uh, Iowa, Iowa State does not do that this year. No. Iowa State's a very bad football team this year. They uh they're they're very bad. Uh, uh yeah, no. Remember speaking, remember, speaking whenever, of remember when everyone wanted to poach their head coach? Just yeah. just want to speaking, toss that out there. Speaking of bad teams, uh Mississippi State, uh not a good not a good football team. They just got Wallace. obliterated from Alabama. 
Yeah, the Alabama players just running free through the secondary. A game could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah. Game could have been a lot worse. Uh, this is, yeah, Alabama is still a, uh, so the Save Us Braxton offense. Just, yeah. Not Braxton, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, Jalen, Save Us Jalen offense. Best thing for Jets is Wilson gets hurt indefinitely. Little little bit NFL in the in the chat. Uh Kyle, uh, Minnesota barely beats the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. Um are your your gopher, I, your golden no, gophers, no, Jared. Not, not my gophers. Not my gophers. Jared. Not my gophers. gophers. Not my golden gophers. I, I've I've asked this que- I'll ask this question again. Are, are we almost done with the PJ Fleck experiment in Minnesota? No, we, we need we need to ask some uh some uh, Golden Gopher fans, Jared. Why, why, why don't you why don't you why don't you find? <laughs> I'm gonna ask. Why don't you bring I'll, on I'll, someone that you may know? I'll head I'll head to the local Dairy Queen and ask around. <laughs> That's a geographic fast food joke for anyone who's paying attention. Yeah. If we, if we want to do any Wisconsin based jokes later, I, I've got some Culver bangers just in the chamber. How does one lose to Northwestern? Great question. Ask PJ Fleck. God, it was half time. Jeez, at half time. Louisiana was up 17-14. Jeez, yeah. what are you doing, Minnesota? What are you doing? I, I mean, I didn't expect Minnesota to be good this year, but holy hell. How about Stroud playing like a veteran? Uh, my family in the Houston area area thinks he's the Messiah. Uh, stay tuned for uh, Kyle's corner on that one. Kyle, Purdue so, destroys... Pen- yeah. so- Purdue destroys Illinois. Uh, Illinois, that what? Uh, here's I've never understood why Illinois is so bad. Bert doing Bert things. People expected Illinois to be good this year, and I was did not see it. Um, and here we are. I mean, as a forty-four to nineteen banger on that one, and again, Purdue's not anything uh, Purdue's not even average by Purdue standards they're they're a below average Purdue team Illinois Illinois anytime that they've played a power five opponent they've lost their only their only opponents were, were only victories are against Toledo by two and then FAU by six honestly if, if Illinois and Toledo played today I would expect Toledo to win that game, even with the knowledge that the game already happened. I'd be like, eh, I think Toledo can get them this time. Yeah, I mean, give, give Illinois credit. Like it was it was only a three point game at halftime, but. Kyle, yeah, it, I will never give Illinois credit. All right. Hey, do you want do you want to give credit to Iowa scoring more than 25 points in a game? Uh, how many of those points were from offensive touchdowns? One. One point? Seven, po- seven points. Okay, seven points. Seven. <laughs> One touchdown. Earth is too focused on beer and cheeseburgers. Among other things. There's a third thing on that list. I, w- I, won't, I won't say it out loud. And that, um, that, and that, was, that was the only touchdown in this game. If you, if you believe it, there were three touchdowns in this game and only one of those were offensive touchdowns. God, that is. And yes, I, and it came from Iowa. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta love some big 10 primetime banger between MSU and Iowa. I believe it. Yeah, we, we all believe it spikes. It was a rhetorical Jeez. question. <laughs> I'd be amazed if you can per carry. 
Wait, how do you go to how do you go 2.3 yards per carry go uh-huh. two for 13 on third down so uh-huh. you still win the game uh special teams and defensive touchdowns that's how yeah i guess yeah 26 16 in that game there and rutgers speaking of teams that should be ranked rutgers four and one here didn't didn't Mi- Michigan kind of ran him off the field, though? I know. Also, I know. Wagner. <laughs> I know. Kyle, their logo. Is that an eagle? Their logo is literally on our show notes. Two feet from my face. I don't even I still don't know what, what Wagner is. It looks like a green blob. Mostly. Is that an eagle? Yeah, it's supposed to, uh, it, no, it's not an eagle. Is it's it a, a hawk? Seahawk. It's a Seahawk. Yes. The Seahawk. See, it looks like a green blob to me. Well, at least from wherever you're pulling that up, here's. That's 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 not a Seahawk. I don't know what that is, but it's not a Seahawk. That looks like a Falcon. That does look like a Falcon. All right. Uh, any Those other games? Don't exist. What Seahawks? Yeah. Is a Seahawk yeah. a real animal or is it made up? Have, has, the, has the city of Seattle been lying to me this entire time? It's made up. A Seahawk's not a real thing. Hold on. I'm having a crisis. Are you telling me a Seahawk is not a real animal? Jeez. Next, y'all are going to tell me brontosauruses aren't real. That's a paleontology joke for anyone paying attention um because the bron- i hate to break this to anyone listening the brontosaurus isn't real uh kyle what do we have Seahawks, in the ass- also also known as an osprey so seahawks are ospreys seahawks commonly known as ospreys uh-oh you're gonna get nomad mad he know he knows about things that fly kyle Ospreys, ospreys are real. Are real. Okay. Next thing you're going to tell me a chupacabra is not real, Kyle. Well, maybe it's a regional dialect thing, Nomad. Maybe ospreys and see, it's kind of like a bobcat cougar situation. Which I just now now that I say it out loud in a recorded medium, I wonder if what I've been told is correct or are, are bobcats and cougars the same animal and it's just a regional dialect issue. I believe also mountain lions, I think they're all three the same animal. Guys, this is a sports podcast, not a not a biology um, zoology podcast. We've gone off the rails as we have a tendency to do. Any other games, Jared, do you want to talk about instead no. of birds? what do we have? What do we have in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag? <laughs> All right. Uh, which fan base from Duncan, which fan base would you rather be? Notre Dame watching their team lose, lose <laughs> with 10 on the field or Florida watching 13 on the field, not being able to stop Kentucky? You know, I'd rather be Notre Dame sometimes. because at least it was a close game. At, wow. The Florida game was just a boat race yeah yeah jets just got uh, iowa style points was a special teams touchdown or a defensive touchdown or was it a safety i got a few questions from uh zach here i think it's zach He, he keeps changing his name he's now chip chop chisel and combust okay Who's combust? Is that Zach's not currently in the chat? I want to know who combust is. Uh, he asks, "Is Duke for real?" Uh, maybe not anymore with their uh, their quarterback up in the air. Yeah. Um, I, last I saw, they say that they don't expect it to be season threatening. Okay, but when they good. say we don't expect it to be season threatening. Um, that they does te- that does tend to us that does tend to push us towards the idea that it will be at least uh, several games. Yeah, sounds like uh, a several also, game issue. 
Yeah. Also from Zach, why is it that Oregon can completely obliterate and prove that Colorado is completely overrated, but USC wouldn't be able to see a Mack truck two feet from certain death? Uh, superior coaching. I, why does Alex Grinch still have a job? Why does Alex Grinch still I, have a job? At least he's not with Ohio State right now, and that's that's all I care. And then the last question from Zach. There's a, Iowa there's, versus there's another There's another factor uh, in why the USC defense is so bad, and I'm also glad that that person's no longer at yep. Ohio State. If you know, you know. Uh, and the last question from Zach. Iowa versus Sparty. That is all. Uh, it's not a question, Zach. It's not a question. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's it for the uh, in the mailbag here. Yeah, anything else, Jared? No. Um, everyone, make sure to tune in tomorrow. Um, Duke was a great storyline. Anyone here about the quarterback? Yeah, we, we were just. We were just talking about how uh, I, last I saw, which was earlier today that he is that the injury is just not season threatening is is basically all i've heard so far unless you're talking about a deeper storyline that i'm not aware of uh yeah no that that should be it for today's episode um I'm going to uh, invite everyone to join the Discord server. We have a lot of fun in the Discord server, especially on uh, game day Saturdays, but throughout the entire week, um, we had a big old social screen. We had a bunch of people stop by. We were watching. We actually started the social screen at like six o'clock, which is early for the evening games, but that's that's when the first evening game kicked off. So we said, screw it, we'll do that. And if any of the 3.30 games come down to the wire, we'll check those out. So we we watched the LSU Mississippi game end while we were watching, uh, you know, the evening game start. And it was a lot of fun. And that's when the booze started flowing. Sometimes, sometimes I get a little tipsy during the social screen. It's fun. It's a lot of uh, you know, I tend to say things that I'm not willing to say on the podcast during the social screen. I'm just going to I'm just going to say that. Um, so, yeah, come join the Discord server. Everyone's welcome to the social screen. Um, voice privileges are for the Patreon people, but everyone's welcome to stop by the social screen for the entire time and listen. Uh, we just we do live commentary of the games. We hang out. We talk shit. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is. Yeah. So discord dot the sloopcast dot com and. But the Discord is not just for Saturdays. Uh, it's fun all week. So just just step on by. Most of it's most of the server is free. Most of the server is completely free. You never have to drop a dime to have fun in the Discord server. There are premium. Uh, there are. Uh, when do we get a baby Kyle appearance? Uh, baby Kyle was on during the social screen. Mm hmm. He was. Yeah. Baby Kyle's on the social screen. Little Alexander. His name's not really Alexander. We don't say yeah. Kyle's baby's name on the podcast, so we just come up with a new name every time. It's uh Exactly. It's Austin's favorite bit. Maximus. Yeah, little Maximus. Where were we just coming up with names that have X in them? Is that what we're doing? Uh so yeah, come join the Discord server. Uh and if you want to enjoy the entire Discord server, we there are a few premium features for the patreon people a couple premium channels a couple premium features uh stop by it's it's 32 50 a year you you can you can do uh you can either do like three dollars a month but if you do all 12 months up front you get a discount so it ends up being like 32 50 a year or something like that come on by come support the podcast uh patreon.thesloopcast.com uh, discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Yeah. How about a uh, former Buckeye player named CJ Stroud? And Stroud is killing it right now. Over 1,200 yards already and no interceptions. And that's something that, that, that I think that's probably more impressive because you always hear about, especially if rookies are 
starting their first year and you see a bunch of interceptions, a bunch of mistakes because the game's just, they're just not used to the speed yet. And here you see CJ Stroud, no interceptions for the year. And he's already attempted 150 plus attempts already. So very yeah. smart with the ball and where he's throwing. All, uh, he has already, as Kyle said, already set the record for most pass attempts with zero interceptions. Uh, first quarterback to throw for over 900 yards in his career without an interception. Um, I want to see him play in Seattle or Green Bay or Pitt in December. Why? He's an Ohio quarterback, my man. What are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, I get that. I get that. You know, you don't really play outside in college football. I mean, you do in late November. I don't know what to tell you. Not to mention he plays in Houston. Like he, he's not going to have to do that too often. And by the way, um, not been a great year so far for Justin Fields in Chicago. I put most of that on Chicago <laughs> uh, in their lack of offensive line. Um, well, he, he completed like but, 15. He completed 15 in a row at one point. Or to start off the game, you're you're, you're jumping, you're jumping ahead of me, but he had a great comeback game today. He had a great year last year. uh, First few games of this year weren't great, but he had a great comeback game today, had a fantastic game, was absolutely crushing. It was the entire team was crushing Denver through the first half. Uh, Then the the Chicago defense fell apart. Uh, that being said, Fields still had a great day. It wasn't wasn't on Fields. He but got he, to play that, Denver that, today. Yeah, he, but he, he plays he for that, Chicago. Yeah, he had that fumble though, that ultimately tied the game. But but it was on the offensive line who <laughs> didn't block anybody. There were I watched some of that game on several occasions. He had pass rushers getting to him who were just not touched, just completely untouched which to me doesn't even like the offensive line in Chicago is terrible. Um, But also just the offense is terrible just from a schematic standpoint, when frequently you have guys getting to your quarterback completely untouched. Cooper got the defensive touchdown on that fumble. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Yes, he absolutely did. That's Buckeye on Buckeye crime on that one. Yeah. That's it. That is, that is it for Kyle's corner, Jared. All right. Uh, that's, that's it for the episode. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow's episode. We will be uh, breaking out for the first time this year, the new tier list. We're going to be tier listing. Uh, we don't do polls. Polls are stupid, uh, but we're breaking out the tier list. Uh, make sure to stop by for that. I'm hyped up for it. I think you should be too. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone. Oh, almost forgot the band. The band today is Slim Fit. Slim Fit is a uh, very interesting band out of the Columbus area. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new here, uh, we play the song on the podcast, but we can't do that on YouTube. So the song link is in the show notes. Local band who needs some I mean, I'll, I don't play any big bands on the show. If I'm playing a band, it's because they're local, they're small, and they need some, you know, attention. And I think they deserve attention. So go down there and click that link, like their video, download their music, uh, this band and any of the bands I play. Also, uh, if you check out the Sloopcast YouTube page, there is a public playlist of all of the songs we play on the show. Uh, it's the Ohio music playlist on YouTube. You can find it on the uh, Sloopcast, uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com. Um, and then check under the playlist. There's an all Ohio music playlist there. So once again, uh, tonight's ending music is Slim Fit. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Slim Fit. Slim Fit.